everybody, welcome to the So Essential vlog. I'm Lucy and I'm here today to show you a super neat professional finish for a neckline facing. So often when we sew a neckline facing, we'll finish the raw edge with an overlocking stitch, but I've got a nice alternative which encases all the seams beautifully and gives you a super, super neat finish. So this is a great alternative if you're making a special garment and you want it to feel really nice, you want the inside to be really clean and neat, also, some people sometimes find overlocking stitches a little bit irritating in that area. Or you might not have an overlocker and you not, might not be that happy with the overcasting stitch on your sewing machine. So in any of those instances, this is a nice alternative for you to try. I've got an example here for you. So this is a Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress that I've just made recently where I use this technique and you can see that lovely neat finish there. So in the video, I'll take you through step by step exactly how to do it. All the products and tools I use today in the video are available on our website and you'll find the link to our website and the products below. And yep, yeah, let's just get started with this great technique. Okay, so here I've got my front neckline facing and my back neckline facing and I've cut them out in a piece of fusible interfacing and also the fabric that I'd be using for the dress. Now normally at this stage you would fuse the interfacing to the fabric, however we're not going to do that for this method. What we're going to do is we're going to take the fabric front neck facing and back neck facing and we're going to put those right sides together at the and join them at the shoulder seams. And then we're also going to do the same with the fusible interfacing as well. So with fusible interfacing, there's always a sort of rough side, which is where the glue is. You'll be able to see or feel the glue. And then there's a smooth side, which is the right side. So we want to place that down right sides together so I've got the rough glue bit towards me on this top piece and it's away from me on the bottom piece so that the nice right smooth sides are together and then we're just going to pin those together at the shoulder seams in the way that you would also normally do the fabric pieces and then we're going to sew them with the seam allowance recommended by the pattern so in this instance I'm using the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo pattern um, which is a lovely lovely pattern I've just made that dress I'm absolutely thrilled with it um, but the seam allowance of that pattern is 5 8 so I'll be sewing the interfacing together with a 5 8 seam allowance at the shoulder seams and then I'm also going to do the same with the fabric pieces as well so I'll just pin those together and then we'll head over to the sewing machine and we'll get those stitched together. I just want to make sure that lines up nicely because especially with your cutting out for this method as well, accuracy is absolutely key because you, you're going to be, everything just needs to fit together really well and you'll see why when I show you the method. So there we go, I've pinned those together and we'll take those over to the sewing machine and sew the shoulder seams together. So here I've got the interfacing facings and I'm going to put those under the foot and backstitch at the start and then sew the seam together in the normal way. I'm using my seam guide foot here which people always ask about. It's fantastic for sewing nice straight accurate seams. Uh, the little markings on it are for different seam allowances and this is for my Husqvarna machine but there are similar feet available for other brands of machine as well. We sell them all on our website. So I'll just stitch that into place, snip the threads and then I'm going to do the same with the other shoulder seam as well. I'm sewing with a 5 8 seam because that's what's required for this particular pattern. So we'll just quickly repeat on this side in exactly the same way and snip the threads. And then we're going to do the same with the fabric facings as well. So sewing those right sides together at the shoulder seams in the normal way. Again, just give, a, give it a little back stitch at the start and the end just to make sure everything is secured. 
and we'll sew those together. Nice easy bit of stitching here for us all. And repeat on the other side. Okay, so we now have the fabric facing sewn together and the interfacing facing sewn together at the shoulder seams. Okay, so we've sewn the front and back facings together at the shoulder seams and we've done the same on the interfacing pieces as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim both of these seam allowances down and then I'm going to press the facing, the fabric facings open at the seams. Um, but obviously I'm not going to be pressing the fusible interfacing so that will create one sticky mess. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm just trimming these down to probably about a quarter of an inch there. Just get rid of some of that excess so it all fits together nicely. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So just trimming those down and then I'm also going to do the same on the fabric facings. I'm just going to trim those down as well just to get rid of some of that excess because we want everything to fit together nicely and lie nicely on top of one another. And then I'm going to trim the other one off as well. But then with the fabric facing, as I said, I'm going to just press those seam allowances open, but I'm obviously not going to do that with my um, interfacing pieces because I'll end up with glue all over my iron. So let's just open those up and just give them a little press. Always use a steam generator iron, so it's a bit, a bit noisy, but these are far and away the best irons you can possibly use for your dressmaking. They make such a difference. They're so much more powerful than um, your standard domestic irons. I mean, they are domestic irons, but um, they've got like a, a, a big section with water on it and they generate a lot more steam than your standard irons do rather than just having the little water bit on the front of the iron, they've actually got a separate sort of pod for the water and that means it creates a lot more steam and is a lot more powerful. Okay, so we've pressed those open. And now what we want to do is we want to pin the facing to the interfacing right sides together so we're going to start at the shoulder seams match those up and pin that together and you want everything to line up nicely on here so take your time and do it you know go for accuracy here making sure your shoulder seams are lining up nicely there you can even just pop a little pin I always do this if I want real accuracy even just pop a pin in vertically so that you can make sure that that's lining up accurately and then we need to go all the way around the edge that outer edge not the edge that will be sewn and attached to your garment but around the outer edge where you would normally use an overlocking stitch to see, to uh, finish the raw edge we're just going to pin those two edges together So you can see there, I've pinned that all the way around the edge, um, right sides together. And then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way around that external edge. So this is the edge that will be attached to your neckline. And we're going to go away and stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around that external edge. So here I've got the interfacing and the fabric right sides together, carefully pinned together for accuracy and I'm stitching that quarter inch seam all the way around the edge but it's the edge that won't be attached to the garment. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. While I'm doing this I'm using my needle up down on my machine which is a really, that coupled with the seam guide foot 
He's a re I find really useful for going round corners and sewing round curves like this because I can set the needle so that when I stop, the needle's in the down position and then that just allows me to manoeuvre the fabric round the curves and then the seam guide foot really helps with that as well. Obviously just trim your threads here for a nice neat finish. Make sure there's no strays. Okay, so that's all sewn together neatly with the quarter inch seam. Okay, so here we've got our facing. So I have sewn the fabric facing to the inter interfacing facing with a quarter inch seam around the edge that normally you would finish with an overlocking stitch. And this is the edge that will attach to the garment. So what we're going to do now is just turn that through and you can just turn it through all the way around like so and then put it on your ironing board and you just want to we're going to just simply press the interfacing into place now so that'll all match up nice and neatly and you get this lovely neat finished edge on your facing which is just lovely one tool that i use sometimes here is this purple thang they're really really cheap really inexpensive piece of kit but it's quite useful it's got like a little stiletto end on it and that's quite useful for just running around the edges there to make sure everything's pushed out and pressing together accurately but it's also got this little quarter inch marking on the end and a little hole to thread elastic through and that sort of thing as well and I also use the stiletto end on um, tasks such as easing fabric through like when I'm easing a sleeve in and that sort of thing but yeah if I just push that through like so just to make sure everything's lining up nice and neatly at the edges and then I'm just going to take my iron and just give that hold it down give it a good press together and I am rushing a little bit because it's a video but obviously you guys will be able to take your time and just make sure everything's lining up and matching up really neatly just done that a little bit inaccurately there but yeah if I use my stiletto again just to make sure everything's pushed out and sitting properly and just hold it together as I say you know you guys will have a bit more time on your hands than me hopefully I'm just trying to get through it for the video for you all but you can see how that's coming together nice and neatly now and I just think this is lovely for if you're doing something like you know a really nice evening dress where you're doing French seams and you just want it to feel nice and luxurious and you want it to feel finished really well inside I think it's a good idea for that and then some people say they find overlocker stitches a bit scratchy as well around the neckline um, or you might not have an overlocker and you might not like the stitch that your um, your overcasting stitch that your sewing machine does so for any of those instances really this just gives you another option um, so yeah just press that down you can see how lovely and neat that looks because obviously this edge will be attached to your garment and that will all that will be enclosed in your garment as well so let's just get the purple thang into action again just push those edges out there we go you can see where this is going
So there we go, you can see now it's all pressed together lovely and neatly and you've got that lovely neat finished edge that will sit inside your garment and just make it look so neat and professional on the inside. It'll look just as beautiful on the inside as it will on the outside. So I hope you enjoyed that technique today guys. I must give credit to, it originated from a lady called Made by Ray. She's an independent pattern designer. She shared it somewhere and then someone who read it from her shared it on their blog. So it's come through a series of different people that I've picked up this technique. So, um, but I wanted to mention Made by Ray because we do stock her patterns on our website. So you can find all of those on our website and the link to our websites below. But I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope some of you will feel inspired to go off and try something new. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.